Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Asian Report and starting with the Australian market, the ASX 200 here. We've been working through from wave 3 here, we've been working through all the way over to wave 4 as an Elliott Wave Triangle, as an A wave, a B wave, a C wave, a D wave <clears throat> and an E wave, each individual wave being three waves each. And then we're looking for, um, from wave four, we're looking for wave five to move to the upside. I thought that um, this particular structure up here as wave one that we've been counting would come back uh, into the 61.8% retracement level, which is just above this number here, um, as wave two. And then we could push up for wave three, four and five and finish up uh, there as wave five. But um, this move down here appears to be an impulse wave. So it's probably that we have a top in place here as wave five and not wave one here. And the traditional way of triangles is grabbing the first move down as wave A here and getting the length of, of that and then putting that on, way, on the end of wave E here to get target of wave five here. So that certainly sort of comes into place here. So we may have that top in play here. If that's going to be the case, then we would look at this being, would need to start looking at this as being uh, five waves down here. Not that we have to rush at all because once we come down here, we'll end up coming back up for an ABC correction here to the 50-60% sort of area here and then we'll move down through here. So if this was the case, we need to do a bit more work on this, but if that's the case, then after the bounce here, we would need to look to go short at that particular point in time. So uh, that's what we'll also be looking at uh, today in a bit more detail. It's possible that this can be wave one here and wave two here, but uh, as soon as it breaches this low here, then um, then we know that that's not the case anymore, okay? So that low there is, is critical um, at this point. So I can still, even though the 61.8%, let's just say it's 6,300, um, uh, I can count it down as an ABC pattern here, um, but uh, yeah, it, It's um, and wave two normally comes back swift and sharp, but this is looking more like five waves now with a strong third wave here. So we can have a top in play here. So um, what does what does that mean in the bigger picture? Well, one of the things first before I go to the bigger picture, I want to have a look at BHP in the bigger picture. So this is BHP here, and it stems all the way back to 208 here and we can look at this here as wave four and wave five up here, then an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave down here. And then we can look at uh, this move here of being five waves up, but this is the same, this is when the ASX 200 also um, moved to the upside uh, here as well um, in the January 2016 here. And I can count this up here as one and two and three and four and five up here. So in this fifth wave here, this is a weekly chart in this fifth wave here, we could also count one and two and three and four and then up for five here. So this top here also played out very much like the um, Australian uh, uh, market did um, the ASX 200 having that triangle pattern and then having the fifth wave up here that was rather short um, in this case so if I compared these markets then the Australian the ASX 200 would be in here and what we would be looking for for the ASX 200 is to have some sort of bounce um, and then move down here as well. So BHP is likely to move lower uh, from this point because one of the things here is I, can, is I can see that this is a wave four here and I know that this is a wave four here. So we've got some sort of topping pattern uh, in play here for BHP and um, that will probably um, work across to the um, the ASX 200 uh, area here. So if I look at this on the daily chart here and look at the trend, um, well, um, well, well, let's just start from here first. So um, this move 
counting way four here. I can count this as one and two and three here and four here. And then we've been counting this move up here in terms of one and two and three. And this has been the triangle pattern uh, within here and a top here. So um, I can have this count and it fits quite nicely. It does create quite a large top in play here. Um, so this is why I wanted to talk about it and we need to track it and we need to have a strategy for it. There's a couple of things here is in terms of confirming all of this is the first step is that yes we're, we're just in up here at the moment but 6,200 here is part of group one here. This market hasn't let go of 6,300 so from the 6,000 here we've got minor group one which is one two and three. When we're looking at one two and three here is that um, we always try to look for support on top of 6,300 as a nice tested support but we're, it's just not doing that it seems to be failing so um, it still could come back up here, and if it does that and find support on, on the 6,300, we'll be bullish from that point and we'll trade upwards there. Okay, um, I was hoping that we're going to get bullish here in terms of it moving up here and having an ABC coming back and <clears throat> um, finding support on, on the level here, on, on all of these tops here, and then we could, you know, move up from there. But that's not the case, and it's sliced through here, So we, and it's appearing to be five waves. So um, it's still possible for it to come um, down to 6,200 and then move up as well. So we'll need to monitor that. But if the 6,200 becomes the, the resistance there, then the doors open for this market to move back down to the next level of support here at 6,000 here. So there's steps along the way. So one of the steps first, well, the first step on the bearish side is we need to see the number 6,300, top of group one there, rejected. So rejection means that the market moves down and then comes back um, and consolidates, has a uh, corrective rally, um, and then we'll look for our short trade if we're triggered. Then we know at, on the rejection, we'll know that we've been triggered to the short side as well. And we can look to come down to the 6,200 area here. And then obviously there's going to be support there as well and um, we'll need to navigate that. But if that becomes the resistance, then we know that we'll be coming further down towards the 6,000 at that particular point in time. So there's steps along the way. And um, yeah, so I mean, also too, we'll be fighting this trend here and it's not an easy trend to count, but this is the best fit for it um, at this stage. So um, we just need to be uh, mindful uh, of, of this. So. Um, yeah, so we've looked at BHP, we've looked at uh, this here, um, this trend here, um, in a nutshell, started in 2016, the same as uh, the BHP did here, if I bring this back to the weekly chart here. So 2016 here was the same time that um, this market also came in at... Um, on this low here at 2016. So both of these markets in their own way have been, we've got one, two, three, four, five up to this point here. And this one here is, I've counted it a little bit differently here. I know that we could also put wave one here and wave two here, um, but um, yeah, um, yeah, but anyway, it, it's still, we've worked through, it's been, it's been a pretty tough trend, these corrections. Um, They've been a little bit sort of unusual and complicated coming through here. But look, anyway, I need to point out this top here and what we can do about it. So just coming back to the four hour chart here, I'll just put this back on to 200 here. So in this case uh, here, um, Today, um, with this here, this market will come down into support here. So it's probably best not to um, to, to chase it. We need to wait for that particular um, uh, rally. Okay, so just moving on to the hourly chart here and looking at this here. We were looking at it like this here, the one hour chart from wave four here. We can count up here as, as wave one, which we're doing. And last time we spoke, we were quite close to the top here from memory. And we were looking for an A wave and a B wave and a C wave down to the 61.8% mark, which was from here 
to this top here which is down on the 6300 here which is which is fine it's okay for it to be here but if it takes out this low here then we can confirm that um that that um it's buried so this it does look like um five waves here if we looked at one and two and three and four and five here but um uh, it can count like the way that i've got it here as well as still as an a and a b and down here because i've been through it on the tick chart here um okay i could fit all that in so with the tick chart here i can call this wave a here then an a and a b and a c for wave b here and then here i can call this wave one and two here and then all of this down here for three and back for four and down for five here so even though it looks like five waves and it possibly could but i've been um in here on the 50 tick chart so i know that um i, I know that we've got the third wave down to uh, down to this point and then this one here is one and two brings us down to three here and four here and then down to five here so it can be counted like this so this is why we just need to be a little bit mindful here this move here is wave one and two here and this is probably one two three four and five here just for the third wave and then the fourth wave and the fifth wave so we're coming down into the lower end of group two it could extend a little bit further down through here so we need to watch that previous low over here um, but like I say um, what we can do is once we've got this low in here if this market rallies this is from from the lower end of group two here up to here if this ends up being in three waves here then we'll start looking for our setups under here so we've got another session to go through uh here so we'll, we'll certainly be looking for a consolid more of a consolidation on this level and above uh, and then we can look for our short trades here we don't no point in shorting here because we'll only get trapped over here and we also need to really help confirm that we've actually got five waves coming down here because as i mentioned this can still count as an a and a b and a c wave to this particular point here okay so moving over to uh china and the a50 here so just bear that in mind we've got a daily chart here so we've been counting this down from the top here as an a wave and a b wave and then all the way down for a c wave here and um we so we can expect a rally now but at the same time um, i need to bring this in now here too as wave one here wave two here and all of this is wave three here this is just a possibility and then wave four here that would pull back to this wave four because that is from this high here that's the 38.2 percent retracement level area here um so with this market here as you know we were looking for a low we were looking for one and two and three and four and five i thought we may have just one more little low in here that didn't eventuate but that's okay um it's but we can call that in wave five of five of c or three here now okay so um it's kind of pointless going long here now we really want to be on support to be uh trading long at this particular stage here and also too in this journey through here we need to work out if we're going to be looking at this as an impulse wave or a um or, or a corrective wave to the upside here so we know that <coughs> excuse me i've got to figure out what we've got uh here i can see that we're going to be pushing higher here i don't want to i don't want to go long before the resistance of 11,500, which is the medium level i want to have a better understanding of what we're actually looking at here once it matures a little bit i mean at the moment it could be an a and a b and then one two three four five for a c wave here and finish here and, and move down i don't know why it would do that for it doesn't um it wouldn't be in line with the count but um yeah look we just need i want to get some more information before we draw on that uh as such so uh let's see what it looks like let's see what this pattern looks like the time that this becomes support here and and then we'll make a decision if we're going to trade up to this point here um or not because if this is corrective to to here then the rest of this will just be corrective and it'll roll over and then we'll have to wait for a short trade on this side over here 
um, the Hang Seng here on the daily chart here. This is a better looking corrective move here in terms of an A wave and then all the way for B wave and then we've been tracking this down as one and two and three here. The wave four has given me a little bit of grief here. I still don't know if the wave four here should be on here and then we've got this as one and two here and three here and four here and one more move down uh, down to here to make five here. I don't know if that's the case just yet but we've got the same thing as uh, the A50 here in China um, but in this case it's the 28 here that's the level here so I just want to see what occurs uh, here because um, this this makes more sense putting it like this here and having this as a triangle here as an A and a B and a C and a D and an E here uh, and then five waves down through to this point here so I'm just not sure how that's going to finish off um, in, in this space here just yet so I was looking, you know, we had wave four here, I'm um, looking at this as wave one and wave two here, and that's fine, and looking at this as wave three, but this has moved up now and overlapped wave one here, so it's more likely that we need to bring, move this over to here. Um, I'll just leave that there for the time being. Um, yeah, and having this as a D and an E wave over here, so, I'm not quite sure yet. We may be in for a bigger bear, bearish picture here as well um, in in terms of having this down of 1 and 2 and 1 and 2. But this overlapping wave structure here has certainly um, ruled out that particular um, count at that stage there. So we don't need those guys. So I'm not making any decisions uh, here for the time being on this one here but I'll just put these in here and same with China let's just see what we've got um, here first before making any rash decisions I mean I can see we can call this an A and a B and a C wave up here but I want to see if we get like wave 4 and wave 5 here because if we get 5 waves here then we're going to get an ABC back and then we can go in and buy and go to the long side there so we just need to uh, to wait a little bit there and the Nikkei is still a little bit tricky as well. So in the bigger picture, we'd been looking at this down here as an A wave and a B wave here, and then one and two and three and four and five here, and um, wave two here. So I can still continue to look at this as bullish as this wave one here, an A and a B and a C for wave two here. And because we're at group one here, the top of group one, the 300 here, we can put that entry signal there now okay but I'm fully aware because of this wave C over here that all of this can be corrective and we can just come down from here as well but I'm not interested in shorting here um, until we take out these lows here okay so that would create the short trade here um, in the bigger picture <clears throat> and that would send it quite bearish at, at that particular point there um, and then we'd need to label this here wave one, wave two, and then this is wave three here, an A and a B and a C for wave four here, and then down for wave five here. So we'd still get a bounce here um, within all of this here as well. So um, yeah, let's just see <clears throat> what bullish signs we get from here. So still an unclear picture there. The nifty. Um, I'm taking the conservative view on this and uh, I'll explain what that is at the moment but as you know we've got wave 3 here, wave 4 here and then this trend to the upside is just not finished so this market has still got further to go to the upside at least uh, at least this market's clear and some of the some of the other ones are not but in this case here we've got wave one and two here and then one and two here <clears throat> now intraday I counted all the way up here and I label that wave three and that wave four here but I've always been um, uh, curious about this because it was really such a small wave four here where wave four should be larger than this one here but mind you this is quite a large wave two here um, compared to all the days that it took here compared to the days that it took to move up there so it's it's a little bit curious but I'm going to st 
just go on the conservative side and label that wave three and this wave four um, and stay with my intraday trend and then looking at this as wave five up here and we had a target <coughs> area up here of um, 11,650 and we'll look at that but that can be the top of this wave three here so then we would be looking at this wave four here that can pull back to this wave four of one lesser degree here or we can look at the 38.2 percent from this low here up to 650 area there somewhere there so it can pull back even lower um, into this space okay so just uh, be mindful um, of that <clears throat> let's go in and have a look at on the four hour chart here so <clears throat> looking at it as wave four here and a and a b and a c for wave four and then looking for wave five and we're looking for target of 11650 here it's struggling at 11600 at the moment and let's look at that on the hourly chart here so <clears throat> we had a long trade within here so i'm pulling the stop way up into this space here i've counted this on the intraday on the tick chart and it it settles in reasonably okay like this here in fact um, this would actually be on top of that little one there <clears throat> so um, it's actually possible to have the top in play uh, here uh, actually as well so this is why I wanted to move the stop up to here I just wanted to lock in what we got in case this fell back um, into the uh, 11,500 here but in counting it it does appear that we've got wave one and two here and then the top of the third wave here so the fourth wave would pull back to the fourth wave of one lesser degree here um, and then move up to the 11,650 area here okay so um, I, but I'm just a little bit unsure about that so that's why I want to put the stop onto this current low here which will probably be stopped out but at least we've locked in some profits uh, area here and even if the market came down here we may and and I could see that if I could see that it's corrective yes maybe we can trade this trend um, up here but in the bigger picture we wouldn't go long unless we had this number here 11,650 as the support okay so um, because with with the trading levels um, I can move over here this is the level here um, we the normal thing is to have the arrival the reaction in three waves then the first high above the level and then a larger correction that comes back down here and then we move off here this is the classic trading levels pattern so in referring this to here is quite simple we have the arrival we have the reaction in three waves and then we have the next five waves up here so that means that we'd be expecting some sort of correction here before moving up here so um, yeah uh, and I don't want to go in for a short trade yet until I'm quite clear that we've actually got a top in play here so we just need to sit tight on this market here as well all right a bit of a long video but um, I just wanted to spend a bit of time on the ASX 200 with the BHP chart okay cheers